a realisation that the approved product list was being, uh, for want of a better word, rigged. Uh, so the deliberate manipulation of of products to steer or advice in one direction or another to, to suit the broader objectives of, of the particular uh, group that I was I was formerly employed with. Um, and for me that was that was the the day I came home and said we need to leave. We need to not be conflicted. I mean I think law, medicine, um, engineering, accounting even, um, all of them without fear nor favour, they're, they're there to service the client. And there is no conflicted remuneration structures, there's no incentives, there's no trips to the Grand Prix and trips to the tennis and these you know, soft dollar things. I didn't have the confidence to give advice under the conflicted model, so I was holding back. And then I was working for a firm that was about to promote me to be an advisor, and I realised I couldn't work there. They didn't actually let me pass probation. I was thinking too differently. I basically have a high ethical approach to what I do and I really do want to do the best for clients in any circumstance and I want to be seen to be doing the best for clients in any circumstances. To remove the conflicts between advice and product that have been a constant source of frustration for me waiting for the the big businesses within the industry to find that path themselves and they just seem to incapable of doing it. I'd recognised the way that the industry was and saw from, um, from working with other firms like how they did it and just felt the conflicts just didn't, didn't sit well with me in terms of even just the, the whole business model was around pushing product and so focused and centred around product. Even when there was strategy talked about, it still ended up delivering product as the solution and for me it didn't make sense. We want a real, I really wanted a divide between strategy and product. So came up with doing strategy analysis for clients, pure strategy, no product at all. And obviously when you do that, you have to charge a fee. We've always looked at, you know, how would we like to be treated if we were clients, if we were consumers? And we've always felt that um, our business was structured in a way uh, which was, was, was targeted towards that. And um, for a long time, um, we were unaware that this was potentially an option. And so as our awareness grew, we felt that we were doing all the things anyway. So the reality was it was a label. In our hearts, we were always independent anyway. We were sick of telling someone else's story, to be honest. Um, and no one else's story matched up with our story. So under an MLC license or under another person's license or under, you know, product or whatever it was, um, it just never felt right. There was a better, always a better way of doing things. I was frustrated with what I couldn't, couldn't advise on by my licensee and I wanted to be able to focus on the client and give them the best possible advice without any restrictions. It's been great, you know, so that, that restriction and the control's been lifted and it allows me the freedom to, you know, give the best advice that I possibly can. I think it's a feeling of just cleanliness. It's just, it's just clean. There is, there's no need to hide anything. You can put your financial services guide out and it's, um, it can be scrutineered by the finest Queen's Council there is. There is nothing to hide. The short answer is options for clients. So we, we say it to clients when we first meet with them that being independent means all the things such as no asset based fees and um, no alignment to a product provider. But the most important thing is being in a position to explain to the clients all the options not having a vested interest in any particular one, so we're agnostic about the option. Our job is to talk about the pros and cons and help the client choose the one that's right for them. And as I've said a lot of times in the past, I don't believe advice can be given any other way. The way we can provide advice when you're an independent, it's purely liberating, as in it just feels right. You're there to help people and you have no barriers. There's no conflicts of interest that will taint any of the advice. So you can simply look at everything on their merits, you understand where the client's at, understand where they're going, help them understand the pieces together. I would say, you know, with all the noise that's going on uh, in the marketplace at the moment, um, with the Royal Commission and the findings and the, the phasier reforms and all of it, um, the reality of it is that we felt because of our decisions that we've made um, to work in our client's best interest, that we haven't needed to really do too much or too much in our business to change things as a result of any of the recommendations. It is a relief to be independent. Um, what it really means is that one, I can sleep well at home. 
knowing that I do absolutely the right thing without any conflicts whatsoever. And two, the type of clients that come in are much more relaxed. It's not more about products or strategy. It's more about this dude has already done the hard yards in order to become independent and has fully committed to that. And so um, the trust relationships develop much quicker than before when you would be associated, attached to a product or a financial institution. Oh, there's a feeling of freedom uh, because you know that you only then have to focus on what's best for the client. Uh, you're not being pushed to sell or recommend any particular products. You're not constrained in the products that you can recommend. So the only thing you're focusing on is what's best for the client. Now, I wish we had done it 10 years ago. Um, I think we, we tend to put barriers in our way, we tend to tell ourselves the reasons why things won't work. Um, I, yeah, every day this gets easier. Simplicity. So it just simplifies the conversation. Independence gives you that capacity to get straight to the heart of the matter. So it's a bit of a no-brainer actually. It's the easiest way to live, it's a comfortable way when the clients call or when we call them. It's an easy conversation is to tell them what we think about what should be done or whatever it may be or catch up with where they're at and what their concerns are and just to simply address them as best we can.